got the call, you know, this uh, two gentlemen of your organization called and both of them insisted that, uh, you know, how the sort of, I don't have anything to do with economics, I'm a student of English literature and then uh, started to working on, I meaning not working on actually writing on banking and finance. Uh, and um, there's a fair amount of curiosity. I don't know whether it's, a, it's also a creative dis disruption or not. But I personally don't see there is any conflict behind because many of us do uh, what we learn in, in our academia and what we do in life is completely different. I could have been a lawyer or even an architect if not a doctor uh, despite my English literature background. Because I personally feel that, uh, you know, you, you, if you have basic intelligence and curiosity, whatever stream we can work, um, I mean, that's fine. You, what you have learned is completely different. I'm not junking the entire thing, but that's what my experience. Uh, so what happened is I started, um, I was a student of English literature in Calcutta University, and uh, Tushar is here from Calcutta. Whether he remembers, there's an organization called Chitrobani, where there's a Gasto Robaj, there was a French professor. Uh, so I was, uh, I was doing my PhD on absurd drama. I was influenced by Samuel Beckett. I was into drama, play, debate, etc. And then I got into Times of India in mid 80s as a, as a trainee journalist. And because of my background, I was covering um, you know, theater and film and child labor and so on and so forth. And then I had to go back to Kolkata in mid early 90s after my father's death because there was nobody with my mom. And I worked with Business Standard in Anand Bazar Patrika and they used to give us salary in cash. And there was a cashier called Mahibabu, he used to into classical music and all. So one day he was coming back from the bank with, a, with his cash, with somebody behind it and all, and it got looted, the entire money. So we were told that uh, the cash would not be disbursed at the end of the month. We have to have a check and we have to have a bank account. And that was the, <laughs> that was the time I became curious about bank. I tried on the three banks there, Yuko, UBI and Allahabad. I could not open any, any account there. Uh, so the last thing I did not want to because time is very short. So I, uh, when I failed with two, two banks, then I approached the third bank, Allahabad, and I met the chairman. Uh, the chairman was um, a gentleman called Singh. He was also incidentally the IBA chairman. So he offered me Darjeeling tea and laddus, etc., etc. And then he told me, uh, Mr. Bandhupadhyay, listen to me. Don't open, even if I uh, get you done, don't open an account here. I am a chairman. My uh, branch is at the basement. After three months, I have not yet got the checkbook. <laughs> so that, that made me curious about uh, what's uh, banking all about. And then, you know, there was a gentleman called Tarukesha Chakrabarti. He was the general secretary of All India Bank Employees Association, the largest trade union in the country. And he used to have a place at Lal Bazar opposite police station. And I was covering trade union, etc. And they used to have some Godre steel almira. And I would go there and he opened an almira and he has all the trade cigarettes of every bank because his representatives are on the board of every bank. So he'll tell you, what do you want about Bank of India, what is happening? Take this file. We want to know about Bank of Baroda, take this file. I'm talking about after liberalization, 93, 94. I was a uh, reporter of trade union. So then I, Sitting in Kolkata, I started getting all the national stories without even understanding much what I am writing. But they're all news value was there. So then my editor happens to be TN9 and now very renowned journalist, you know that. So he, called, he said, why don't you come back to Bombay? I was very happy to come back. I was itching to come back and start bank reporting. I said, look, I'm not a Maharashtrian. He said, are you so parochial? I mean, you know, I said, not like that. So banking is all about R, CRR, SLR, CAR, and you see the Tendulkar and Kanitkar and Solkar. So there's a connectivity between you know, being a Maharashtrian and banking. I would probably not be able to do that because I'm a Bandhupadhyay. I, I don't have an R in my uh, surname. So he said, no, you come. So I came and then, uh, then I got into it sometime in 96 when um, Rangarajan was leaving. Uh, um, as the RBI governor. And um, what I found is this, you know, uh, if we approach any subject as an expert, then there's a problem. Because, and a subject like finance, because things always overtake us. You don't know what I know today. I mean, just in a couple of hours time, it, it just became old and something new has happened. 
So the best thing approach is as a student. And what also makes me very, uh, when I, what I get excited is that the interlinkages between the markets. You know, it's, it's, you can't see anything in isolation. And it's, it's a traditional talk about, you know, is a global village and globalization. That's a different story altogether. But between the market, whether it's a forex market or debt market or corporate bond or banking, etc. Every, everything is, a no, everything, there's a linkage there. And uh, I get excitement and my adrenal start running when I find this interlinkages and all. And being a student of English literature, I have the advantage. I have always been an outsider's perspective. Now, I, I ask very silly, stupid questions because I don't know. And that's how I get, get to know things. And the basic thing, as I said, if you are curious, you know that. So now talking about banking and the creative disruption. So what happened is this, we have a very repressive banking system in India. You had the first set of banks, uh, 12 bank, uh, 10 banks is 19, uh, 90, uh, 1993. And then we had to wait for another 10 years to get two banks, which is Yes Bank and, and uh, Kotak Bank in 2002. And then we had, to, we had to wait for another 13 years to get two more banks, that is the IDFC and Bandhan. So since independence between 1947 and 2015, we have just two plus 10 plus 2 plus 2, 14 banks. And that's one side of the story. And the other side, you have, you have liberalized the market. You have said that interest rate is free, on deposits is free, on loan it's free. But if you supply side, if you, if you have a repressive system, and even if you free up the market, you actually don't have a free market, which is why even after freeing the savings rate, for, you see the entire cartelization and most of the banks are refused to match, 4%. Talk about SBI, HDFC, ICICI, everybody is 4%, because there is no competition. But now things have changed. Uh, now things have changed. You have you are you are coming that uh, uh, ten small finance banks are coming up. One of them has already started in Jalandhar. Eleven payments bank have got license. Three of them have surrendered. I'll come to that later. And then of course, uh, Reserve Bank of India governor has been talking about universal bank on tap license. And then other banks like uh, wholesale banks and uh, um, depository banks, so on and so forth. So suddenly there is a very honest and sincere attempt to open up the tap and to to you know to and to take care of the supply side because banking as a business is very different you know if you have money then the coal license has been auctioned the gas auctioned minerals everything is auctioned but banking something it cannot be auctioned so you have uh, your integrity you have your track record so on and so forth but the point is there is, it's, it's not a very transparent thing. There is still discretion left. No? Reserve Bank of India gives uh, license, to, uh, license to enter any foreign banks. Reserve Bank of India gives license to cooperative banks, NBFCs and all. Why do have, uh, have an external agency uh, to, to, uh, to get who should be getting it in on the law? So there is a sense of, look, I am not responsible. I'm not responsible, you know, it's, it's just firing on somebody else's shoulder. If, if something goes wrong, because there is a bit of discretion is left, you don't really know what is transparent. When, what is, what, on what basis I pick A and what basis I pick B. Um, uh, fortunately, nobody, or, or nobody dares to challenge. There is a court cases against SEB and all, but RBI has never faced anything and all. But I don't understand why you need a regulator, even after so many years, why do you need to have a have an agency outside uh, committee to endorse what you have been doing because you are credible enough and all. So talking about disruption, what we are saying is this, it's after this entire um, repressive financial system, then we are seeing is a, for the first time there is a shift, a bank like Bandhan, and I'm not using the platform to market Bandhan, bank like Bandhan has approached the things in a different way. And it's taking the entire conventional banking system head on. If you see a bank like State Bank of India, which is the largest banking network in India, it, it picks up money from hinterland. Uh, so that's the liability center is largely the hinterland of India, rural India. And it lends money to you and me in urban India in terms of mortgage and auto loan and corporate loan, so on and so forth. But a bank like Bandhan and these other banks which are coming up in the small banks and all, but Bandhan particularly at this point of time, is just doing exactly the opposite. It's, it's, it's wing you and me in the urban center for our money. And it says that, look, uh, we are as liquid as others. We are as safe as others. Because under DICGC insurance scheme, one lakh of your money is safe. That's, that's true of every bank. And you are offering little more than others. And we are, so give our deposits. And I will deploy the deposits in rural India. 
So it's just exactly the opposite, and in some sense, it's it's two banks under one roof: a uh, one bank for the liabilities and one bank for the for the for the rural uh, for the for the assets, which is the rural thing and all. So this is, and it could, and it's 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 making its NIM is the so-called net interest margin is 10 percent plus, because it's it's borrows money uh, at about right now it's about eight eight and a half percent, and it lends money it's about 18 percent plus. Now nobody will bother about this 18 percent because for them it's not 18 percent versus 11 percent because our so-called this high street banks will never reach them. So for them it's 18 percent versus 80 percent or so. Now I'll tell you a little story about the origin of Bandhan and that will make it very clear. But Bandhan is not a or for that matter all these microfinance entities who are disrupting the system they are not uh, nobody is a, in, in that sense a social change agent or anything like that. They are just doing business, they know how to do business profitably in the so called bottom of the pyramid, which our conventional banking system refuses to see. Of course, there are issues like you cannot pay different, you do not have a differential pay scale and so on and so forth and all. So, what happened this gentleman of the Bandhan, he saw in one day in a Shobha Bajar, North Calcutta market that the sabji vendors were taking money somebody, one burly man in a green t-shirt and jeans coming and giving 500 rupees each, I am talking about 2000, 2000, year 2000 and collecting 5 rupees and going away and in the evening coming back and collecting this 500 rupees. So, this gentleman watched them for a few days, this ritual and then he asked this lady, is that why are you paying so much? 5 rupees on 500 rupees meaning 1 percent for half a day, so 730 percent for a full day. Can you afford to keep with this kind of interest rate? And this lady, these ladies laughed, they said, no, we are not paying in interest rate, we are just offering a cup of tea. That was the price, 5 rupees and all. Where else would I get money? Will any bank touch me? No. Do I have the collaterals? No. Am I illiterate? No. I do not know even how to sign. Do, can I do the paperwork? No. Can I afford to go to a bank and lose half a day of labor uh, 10 kilometers away? No. Can I afford to have an auto rickshaw fare or bus? No. Here the fellow comes to me and gives me 5 rupees with a cup of tea and on 500 rupees I make 600, 650 rupees and all, I am very happy to do that. So that was the germination of the Eureka movement and all. For this kind of people, you know, it's, it's, it's the cost is not important at all in that sense because they make their IRR even after doing that, their IRR still remains high. And that is the model Bondhan has built on and that is the model which your uh, two more entities which have gone into market and done is still now is doing pretty well is Ujjivan and Equitas, they have done that and the small finance banks are doing it and all. And um, so this is, this is the system we are seeing it and there is a lot of talks and about uh, you know, mobile banking, a lot of talks about technology, etc, etc. I am not very sure about that disruptions which we are seeing in Atom Bank and Federer in Germany and all you know, this kind of things is going to happen in India because the basic thing is the connectivity still remains a big, big problem. We spoke about 70,000 crore broadband highway, the government spoke about that, there is no trace of that. I have seen uh, the kind of things over there. In Uttarakhand, in branch, you just cannot open the, every day we are seeing that you know there is a disruption and then find that uh, monkeys are chewing off the wires. So that we have to put a monkey cage to protect the broadband wires over there and all. And our, uh, you know, there is, uh, there is a call drop, etc. So we are talking about that. So the the other channels of banking and the mobile banking, you no, know, theoretically all these are fine because these are still, I think, it's a largely a urban phenomena. Internet still is an English language phenomenon, so on and so forth. So it's it's a long way to go, uh, but um, it it is happening, and I think this is also. Uh, sending a very strong signal to our traditional banks, they are also trying to change uh, their ways uh, approaching the entire banking.